morning, Catherine. Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, hello, my name is Catherine Dip. I am the project team lead for the uh, RevStack uh, project of the OpenStack Newton cycle. I currently work for IBM at Silicon Valley Lab, California. Uh, I am the performance and test engineer at IBM. Excellent. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about uh, the project you are leading, uh, and you know the roots of the projects and why it's so important for us? Okay. So um, RevStack is the source of tools for OpenStack interop testing. So we all know that it, uh, there are so many components in OpenStack with so many configurations that people can um, use for the, each of the components. The combination of the configuration and the components is tremendous. So interop is a topic, is a goal that the OpenStack community uh, really need to achieve so that uh, uh, when we say OpenStack Cloud, there is a minimum core requirements that uh, all OpenStack uh, uh, Clouds will, will be able to operate and execute. So as a tool uh, for OpenStack interop testing, uh, the RevStack projects have two major components, the RevStack clients and the RevStack server. The RevStack client is the tools that the user or the vendor can download so that they can test their clouds on premise. So once finished testing, they can upload the test results to the RevStack server. The RevStack server is currently um, hosted at uh, revstack.openstack.org. So this is the official test result a collector for reporting uh, OpenStack interop data. It is also the source uh, to store the um, data that uh, is used for OpenStack uh, Power Logo application. This means that uh, for any vendor who want to apply for the OpenStack Power Logo, they will have to run the RevStack test submit the result to the uh, RevStack server, and then provide this link uh, of their test result along with uh, their application for the Power Logo uh, 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 application. Great. Uh, so based upon the last summit, uh, what are you know two or three hot topics which came out for the RevStack? So during the Austin summit, one of the the hottest topic that uh, was discussed is about uh, expanding the scope of the RevStack project. So so far, the RevStack project is pretty much concentrating on uh, um, delivering the uh, requirements set forward by the DevCourt committee. This is especially true in the area of, of defining the must pass test and also the pass fail criteria, uh, namely the uh, DEF core guidelines. They are thought that uh, RevStack being a OpenStack interop tool set should allow a vendor to define own test cases uh, that they think fitted and uh, also at the same time allow uh, a way to upload the uh, vendor defined pass fail criteria. So this is a very interesting uh, topic at the same time is very controversial. Uh, it is especially in the area that um, if RevStack allow vendors specify test and guidelines, uh, how would uh, a user coming to RevStack being able to clearly uh, differentiate the, gui the guideline defined by DevCore versus the, the uh, vendor-specific guideline. 
So we spend a lot of time of this topic. At the end, uh, the consensus a team agreement is that we will continue um, concentrating on delivering uh, depth core requirements uh, uh, during the uh, Newton cycle, but at the same time, we will uh, lay down the fundamental features that we see it would be needed uh, to expand the red stack uh, scope in the upcoming OpenStack releases. Excellent. Um, so uh, with respect to the current uh, release or the work for the current release, the Newton one, what are you know top uh, two or three priorities for the group? So um, during the uh, summit, we got a lot of the feedback from the users that um, Currently, there is no way to associate the test result upload at the uh, summit um, to the uh, a specific vendor or a product of a vendor. Because currently, um, the data can be uploaded to RevStack server anonymously or uh, with a signed uh, uh, signature. However, the data sharing is always anonymously. So with that feedback from the user committee, in the next cycle, our top priority will be enabling um, vendor uh, and product registration so that uh, with that, we would be able to associate uh, data with a spe specific vendor or a specific product. Okay, so that's uh, one top priority. Uh, any others you would like to share? The other priority is about, about data archiving. Um, uh, uh, like I said earlier, data can be uploaded today anonymously. So therefore, we have a lot of data upload uh, up there. Uh, some of them are very meaningful. Uh, some of them are not. So uh, we need to uh, um, design and, uh, and 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 implement a uh, a data archiving strategy so that at one hand we can uh, clean the data, but also uh, maintaining the integrity of the data itself. Excellent. Um, so next question in, uh, is uh, with respect to the themes uh, and how the project, uh, project deliveries uh, fit into those. Uh, the top five uh, themes for the open stack are scalability, resiliency, manageability, modularity, interoperability. Uh, so, I mean, clearly, you know, interoperability is dependent on REF stack, uh, but I wanted to give you a forum to discuss how the REF stack uh, impacts or delivers on the other things also. Yes. So, so uh, as you said, uh, interoperability is our priority. And uh, uh, the priority is uh, we, we will enabling uh, um, uh, OpenStack interoperability with using data-driven method methodology. That means that um, the more meaningful the test uh, that we define, uh, the, the better uh, we will be able to uh, to test and ensuring that uh, interoperability would be a reality for OpenStack. So. Um, Testing, defining the test, the must pass uh, and the pass fail criteria, and uh, collection of the data it are the vehicle that we will use to uh, uh, enable uh, open that into R. Excellent. Um, any other things you would like to add uh, for either themes or the priorities or kind of longer term? direction of the REF stack? Yes. 
So, so as I said earlier, uh, our, um, our major access is the data. So I really encourage the community to, to um, really run the REF stack test for the end product. We know that uh, REF, the underlying test uh, suite for REF stack is Tempest, and all development environments will run Tempest test. But what we are talking about here is the end product. Uh, running the REST stack test on the end product as a user and, and upload the data uh, to REST stack server. The more data we collected at the REST stack uh, server, the better chance for the dev core team to perform analysis and also uh, with the that they can define a, a, a true and practical uh, open stack core set of implementation out there for the community. So we really encourage the user and the community to test and upload the data. At the same time, we also uh, would love to have more contribution to the REST uh, project. We are a very small project and we love to have uh, uh, any contribution that we can get. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Catherine, uh, one thing uh, kind of struck me, uh, you were, uh, you know, since uh, in, uh, RevStack is data driven and the more data you collect, uh, the, you know, the better uh, assessment and better results uh, you can provide to the community. Uh, so any, uh, you know, uh, additional data or additional extension to the, uh, the extension to the collected, collected data, uh, the RevStack is contemplating or thinking about? Yeah, so, so right now, um, if you look at uh, uh, the Tempest test suite, the API test suite, there are about uh, 1,600 test cases. But if you look at the required test from the, uh, 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 the five by DevCore committee, we are about uh, 300 tests at the most with the, 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 the upcoming test case. So uh, we understand why the test, the required test, has to be small to begin with, because uh, it is. It, it, we have to start something that we know that is core cool for everyone. Uh, because of that, a lot of tests of the test result upload are really only test the required test. We really love to have everyone to test the entire API Tempest test suite. With that, we would be able to define a much more meaningful must-pass test in the upcoming releases versus uh, what we have been done so far is pretty much based on uh, 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 what uh, the scoring of what we think it should be. Um, with more data, we would be able to do data analysis. We are not there yet. Excellent.